Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. With the spring update for CRM 2016, they've introduced a lot of new features like field service and project service, and we're going to start delving into those a little bit in our next set of videos. But before we do, I want to finish up our kind of what's new with CRM 2016 spring update and talk a little bit about some of the Interactive Service Hub updates. So as many of you know, Interactive Service Hub was a feature that was released with CRM 2016, and we did a little bit of a video feature on it initially when it first came out. They've made some improvements, or I I don't want to necessarily say improvements, but they've added some enhanced functionality around Interactive Service Hub with Spring Update, primarily around the forms themselves and around knowledge base articles. So in this video, we want to just go ahead and look at a few of the enhancements that they've made. One of the first changes you'll notice, we actually highlighted in a previous video, if you go into settings, you'll see underneath application, you'll see an interactive service hub icon. This will take you directly to interactive service hub now, as opposed to in the past where you either had to kind of click on the alert that popped up or you had to go in through the traditional CRM articles and access the information from there. The other thing that they've done is they've made some changes to how the metadata loads to increase that load or decrease that load time when the uh, the interactive service hub actually loads. So in the past, you'll, you'll have noticed that it takes a long time specifically after a publish of customizations for the interface to load. That will be drastically reduced from an application standpoint. Another change that they made is directly around customizations and primarily with form customizations. So your new interactive service forms will at, will customize and have a lot of the same functionality that you would normally have seen with a CRM form in the past. So for example, if I were to go into the case entity and open up forms and go into case for interactive experience, one item that I'll notice in here is if I come up to insert, I have the ability to add web resources and iframes. That coupled with the ability to do JavaScript, just like you would normally do when customizing a form, now gives you a much more extensible platform that you can do to start bringing other items into these interactive service forms when you're working through them. The other nice thing about this is you also have the ability to have the timer KPI control be brought into this application as well. So if you are doing SLAs or if you want to do custom SLAs on individual items, you have have the ability to bring the timer in there and now surface that information so as your service experience or as your service users are using the application they now have the capabilities to actually have kind of the same experience that in interactive service hub that they would have had through the traditional web interface another major change that they've made on the interactive service forms and i'm just going to go into account and open up the account for interactive experience is the ability to do lookup filtering so we've had lookup filtering for a long time um, if you on um, traditional entities like you know account or any lookup field really but a good example of that is if i go into the parent account and i open that up in your traditional web experience, we've always been able to come in and turn on related record filtering. This option is now available to you from an interactive service hub standpoint. So now you have the capabilities to turn that functionality on and work with information from there. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and go back into the case entity. The last change that I want to talk about is a change we actually got quite a few questions on from video feedback when we did our first interactive uh, service hub knowledge base article video was around translation so if you remember with the new knowledge base functionality that you have in crm you have the capabilities to go in and create translated articles that you can then work with one of the problems that people ran into when they were working with it was if your native language was you know, English, it was hard to find your articles in other languages so you could turn around and send them to customers and email them to customers. So they've corrected that now with with uh, Interactive Service Hub in the spring update. So if I go into my knowledge base search functionality and I go down into my filter data, you'll see here that there's an option that says, what is your default language? So this allows you to set the default language for your items that you're, that you're working through for your knowledge articles. So this is where if you have a specific knowledge article language you wanna use for the organization, this is where you could set it on the form that is enabled for your knowledge source. And this could be any entity that you're surfacing knowledge functionality on, account, contact, so on and so forth. The other option that you have is to use the user's default language. But now there is an option 
option in here where you can check user can change language filter. And the nice thing about this now is when they're filtering or they're searching for individual items, they now have the capabilities to look for those in other languages. So I've already kind of made that change and enabled that change. So I'm going to save and publish my form. And now let's go into Interactive Service Hub and look at what this looks like. So I'm going to go into Settings, Interactive Service Hub. Before we demo the, the feature, I'm going to go into Service and Knowledge Articles, and I'm going to open up my Knowledge Articles. And as I can see, I've got a Products Returned Knowledge Articles. This has actually some translations associated with it. It has a translation for Germany, uh, German, and it has a translation for Spanish. So this has already been translated. This already has those translations defined. So we went in, we created the translations, we updated the text, we published the article. So we have three different language versions of this article available. Now, if I were to go back into Service and go back into Cases, I could go ahead and open up, for example, this faulty product case. And now I'll see when I go into my knowledge search functionality, it gives me all my recommended options, but it also shows me the articles in English. If I were to change this, I could now choose German. And because I chose German and Germany as the language, now it shows me what that article looks like in German. And so now I could open up that article. I could link that article to email and email it to a specific person. This is now where I have that major functionality that people were looking at in the past. So now you have the capabilities where if you turn this on, users can go ahead and they can work with the information and then email it in the language that they want. Again, you have to have translations for every article in the languages that you want to work with but it gives you a much more effective way of moving forward. So that's going to do it for our quick what's new with Interactive Service Hub for spring update for administrators and customizers. Hope you found it helpful and informative, and I particularly wanted to highlight the translation and being able to locate and find that information moving forward. Tune into our next set of videos where we'll start our series on Microsoft new feature field services and project service. So for again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek just saying thank you again for watching, everybody. Take care and have a good one.